to failure of the implant and a cost of twenty to fifty thousand dollars for the repair if that implant had failed. Instead, the surgeon removed the cyst, put the bioactive glass, now trademarked as Nova Bone, in the site, and that repaired the, and saved that implant from being lost and avoided revision surgery. So there are now about 20-some products sold in 40-some countries worldwide using the bioactive glass, the same grandfather composition we discovered 40 years ago. The materials being sold under the trademark of Nova Bone, it can be simply used as a, as a powder or also now as a putty. It is used in orthopedics for various types of trauma repair, for arthroplasty of filling around implants, for general surgery, and particularly important in, in America where there's a growing need in our aging population for spinal repair. Half a million implants. Procedures are being done now annually, requiring inner body uh, fusion and using a synthetic material as an alternative to the patient's own bone, particularly for the elderly patients, for the post 60. God, that's, that's elderly. <laughs> uh, it includes at least a few of us here in the front row. We, this need is growing annually by far greater than gross national uh, products and healthcare costs in general. Cranial facial repair, there are whole ranges of applications. I won't I'll go through that whole list where they're used. So U.S. and worldwide, there are a whole host of products, each labeled with their own country's names and titles and such forth. There are also other alternative uh, products that are related, very close relations to the original 45S5 bioglass products that are being sold. Nobody knows for sure, as far as I've been able to ascertain, but there is a, I think, a gross estimate uh, that somewhere between 5 to 10 million patients have had their quality of life enhanced by the use of this generation of bioactive materials. Ten years, 12 years ago, though, we began a quest, and that quest is the second objective today in this talk, is to share with you, because it offers the promise of opening the windows for this dealing with the global impact of this aging population worldwide. And that is to try to understand at a fundamental molecular chemistry, molecular biochemistry level, the mechanism of what bone growth called osteogenesis. And we had a hypothesis that it was genetic stimulation by the ionic dissolution products that lead to the growth of the new bone. The first quantified evidence of this is a result of international collaboration between Professor Onishi's surgical team at University of Osaka, Japan, and, and our group at a Imperial College at the time where he developed a very important model of critical size defect in rabbits where the defect is filled by the powders and it made it possible to quantify as a function of time, the kinetics process in the animal of filling and regenerating that bone. And comparative studies were done of all the synthetic materials during Professor Onishi's uh, period of directing this work. And this gives one example of the huge difference between the class two bioactive materials, where bone will grow, but only by a process of so-called osteoconduction. This is one week of, of a synthetic hydroxyapatite made in Japan, commercially on the market, used by surgeons. In one week, this yellow line, you can see there's very little, if any, bone that is penetrated inside that defect in one week's time. And in contrast, the class one, class A, bioactive 45F5 bioglass, grandfather material, within one week, there are bridges between these particles penetrating at least halfway or more into the defect, creating the new bone. Rapid colonization of bone on the surface of the particles. We now know that that bone is following 
the concentration gradient of the, the release of the silicon calcia at critical levels, the turning on the genes of the progenitor cells that are present at that, at that site. In just one week's time, after 12 weeks, the, the whole defect is completely filled and is remodeled. New bone is there. Some of the particles still remain. Most have been resorbed and replaced by the new regenerating bone. It opens up the concept of a completely new approach. And when you look at the kinetic curves of comparison of these different materials, we find that with the use of the class A bioactive class materials, that we have the same amount of bone quickly formed within a couple of weeks as was in the defect before it was trephined out by the, by the surgeon. So we began to think, why does that happen so quickly? How we can control that and how can we use that information? And particularly, what is the genetic basis of this? So we compared the material science with the biological science, and again, in a kinetic expression of log curves here, and I don't take the time to go through, but the phenomena was that the implant we were seeing was producing a slow release of critical concentrations of the silica and calcia that were turning on, we hypothesized, the genes to lead to cells in a cascade to proliferate and grow and form the new bone, and that produced the new rapid bone growth. So we began testing with the direction Professor Julia Polak, myself, this hypothesis, that there were two things happening within this regenerative environment intracellular effects, things that were taking place inside the cells due to the release of the dissolution products that were turning on the growth process. And so we began this investigation with support from U U.S. Biomaterials, and we quickly learned a number of very important things. That the cells from the primary bone cells removed from femoral heads of, of uh, old patients, old being 55 average year, which at that time seemed old, now it seems pretty young. Um, they would grow, quickly form a chin, new bone by four steps of the cell cycle, all steps influenced by the bioactive glass. This is a big shift in the thinking. You don't just put the material there and then wait for the body to respond to it. In this case, the material is turning on the cells to shift their cycle. And the shifting of the cell cycle would lead to a complete sequence of events that led to proliferation. And this has now been animated with the help of a graduate student. And it's the first time I've seen it presented publicly. And this is now in a short time clip what happens when the glass is put into the body. A progenitor cell gets turned on. If it's capable of forming new bone, if it isn't capable, it's turned off and dies and gets out of the way. There's some real social...